In this demo, I want to take a deeper dive into two of my favorite go-to staging methods for making a product look great. Both of these setups are all CG and can be completely set up in Stager very easily. The first is creating a bit of a monochromatic image like this. For that, I will start with another shoe I designed. This one is a little fluffier than the soccer cleat and could use a little bit more of a matte environment. I will take it over to Stager and start building a little world. For starters, I want a ground and a wall. I can easily create these by clicking the icon here on the side for the plane or by dragging and dropping the plane icon onto the scene. I will do one and start by scaling and positioning it where I want for the ground. Then I can click it, hit Ctrl D to duplicate, and I can create a second ground plane that is going to be our back wall. I rotate that 90 degrees and place it into position. To give this room a little more life, let's add some furniture here. I love our parametric sofa model. It has tons of options and you can easily create nearly an infinite number of couches just by controlling these sliders. Once I have it looking the way I want, let's just position it against this back wall here. A plain wall can feel a little bare, so let's just throw one of our picture frame models on there. We just need to rotate it into place, scale it up to where we want it, then just make sure it's nice and centered above our sofa. For the shoe itself, let's go ahead and create a little podium for it. We can do that easily by selecting our cylinder, scaling it and positioning it into place, and then just setting our shoe on top. For that, I can grab the center gray ball of the shoe widget, and that will snap the shoe onto the surface of that cylinder. For the color of the room, let's keep it monochromatic. We can select one of the colors from our shoe and make that the color of the entire room. To do that, we just need to select one of our objects, navigate to the color parameter inside our materials tab in the bottom right of the screen. We can select the little eyedropper and just pick a color off of our shoe. I tend to lean more towards less saturation to allow the more saturated values of the shoe to pop off. To get that color onto the rest of the objects in the scene, we use a tool that's very familiar to Photoshop users. It's the eyedropper. You first select all the non-shoe objects in our scene, then select the eyedropper icon from the screen left side, then select the object you just colored. This will apply that one material file to everything else. The benefit is that now, if you just change one of the colors on one of those materials, it'll adjust all of them because they're all linked together. It's pretty handy. Now let's create our final camera. For that, we're going to select the little icon at the top of the screen. It's a camera with a little plus button next to it. This will immediately switch our view so we are seeing the scene through our new camera. We can position the camera simply by navigating around the space and pop on a little depth of field. For the depth of field, to create the focal point, all we have to do is click this little box and then select the part of our image we want to focus on. We can control the intensity of the blur with this blur slider. Let's go ahead and make our final tweaks and we are good. With that in place, we can focus on the lighting. Normally I start with the standard environment light inside a stager and see if I can get that looking the way that I want. I can do that by rotating it around and playing with some of the intensity and color values. If you can't get the results that you want from the default, you can easily add in a ton of different environment lights that are built into Stager. If none of those are working for you, feel free to download a different one either from our asset library or from an HDRI website off the internet. You also have the option of adding some CG lights into the scene as well. My two personal favorites are the area light and the spotlight. The area lights are great for creating some nice soft shadows. This is because you can scale up their size and a larger light source results in softer shadow quality. All you have to do is add it to your scene, point it at your objects, and adjust the exposure. And remember, when you're scaling it, the bigger the light source, the softer the lighting and shadows will be. If you're in your scene and you want to highlight a smaller region, the spotlight can be your best friend. You can add that, position it where you'd like, and adjust the outer angle of the light to really focus on the region you'd like. Now with the lighting in place, we can render it out and marvel at our beautiful monochromatic scene. For the other lighting example, I want to start with something a little shinier and more reflective. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring in our soccer cleat. For this, we are going to start in a similar way that we did the other one. We're going to create some planes, one for the ground, and we're actually going to make 
two walls for our background. So let's go ahead and create them. And again, you can just select them and hit Control D to duplicate, and then just rotate them into place. In the end, it just looks like half of a box. So let's go ahead and position our shoe right here in the middle. Now I just need to create the camera again by clicking that camera icon. Let's go ahead and position it where we want and set the focal length we desire. Then we adjust the same depth of field parameters and get that into place. Now we're going to do something fun. We are actually going to use our floor and walls to light up the scene. To do that, we simply go into the material attribute of one of those planes. Scroll down to where it says Emission, expand that section, and turn the Emission setting to 1. Since we duplicated each plane, they will all have the same base material, so adjusting one should adjust all of them. This method pretty much turns our stage into one gigantic glowing light. Now we can just place a few cameras around the scene to focus on the areas that we'd like to feature. Then we just need to render it out, and we've got our product looking beautiful in this angelic ethereal plane. This methodology is great for catalog shots or websites because they have the same background and it creates a situation where multiple images can flow together nicely. And that's it. Now these two methods are just my personal way of doing it. They're not the end all be all and you're gonna develop your own, but I just thought I'd share these with you to give you a little jumping off point.